Hey guys, Zach here. Been a while again. I've been awful busy lately. Wanted to give you guys a look, maybe a first preview of the Geisley Mark III rail for uh, AR-15's modular forend. Now, Geisley calls it the SMR, which is Super Modular Rail. Um, and if you're familiar, this is the latest installation, the Mark III. Um, currently, there are the Mark I, the Mark II, and the Mark IV. And we'll cover, I'm going to cover briefly just the differences between uh, the different rails that Geisley offers. Just give you a quick look at this one here. You can see that uh, you have the Picatinny across the top. It's marked. You see Geisley Mark III. Mod 1, super modular rail, 15 inch. The 15 inch version that I'm going to be using on the my um, latest build that I'm working on here. Now, the Mark 1 rail is very similar to this rail. It has these con these nice contoured sides. Um, comes with the, the additional Picatinny sections that you can put at 3, 6, and 9. However, the Mark 1, these holes are tapped so that these rails will, you could screw these these rails straight to um, to the forend itself. The Mark II, um, Geisley went with a little bit more minimalist, minimalist, a little cheaper um, approach and these sides aren't contoured anymore on the Mark II um, and like this one it comes with these, and I'll get it up to the camera here, these little backers here and they slide into these channels and with those channels and the little backer, you can attach these rail sections. As I can, as you can see here, let me get this up so you can get a better view of it. See, you've got these channels right here, and the backer slide down really easily. Actually, you don't actually even have to remove the rail to, uh, you know, from the gun to attach those. You can just slide those in. You can just kind of work them down with your finger, uh, line them up, line the holes up, and then attach with these screws. So the Mark III is kind of um, a cross between the Mark II and the Mark I. All right. So you're getting the contoured sides and a little bit better machining of the Mark I, but you're you're getting a little bit lighter package, and you're losing the you know the pre-threaded side panel pieces here, and you're and you're getting the these little tabs that you're going to have to put in on the on the Mark III, which is something it shares in common with the Mark II rail. Now, if that isn't confusing, there's also a Mark IV, which is a little bit different design altogether in that it doesn't even have these holes. It just has a pre-attached, kind of all one piece, unibody piece of rail at 3, 6, and at 9, but the 9 piece doesn't extend nearly as far. So for me, I like to actually move my my bottom rail back just a little bit further so I can atta attach um, an angled foregrip or a hand stop. I like to run that way. I don't like to run with just the bare rail. So the Mark IV really wouldn't work for me. Um, but uh, the Mark IV you can't, not without doing some kind of uh, homegrown ingenuity, you can't attach additional rail sections to it anywhere. So this Mark III is kind of the, the very, very, very latest. You know, I think this thing's only been out a couple weeks now iteration um, from Geisley. This one runs in the um, 15 inch, it runs about 350 uh, to give you kind of a comparison. I think the 15 inch Mark I is about 375, maybe 400 even, and the Mark II is 300. So you're kind of at the, at the middle of the price point between the three. You're getting a little bit of the, the features from the Mark I again, um, but you're not gaining the, the threaded holes, which is fine for me. I mean, once I have these rail sections on and bolted down, I'm not going to be mo really moving them around. I, I generally keep my uh, my AR set up just one way. Um, like all of the Geisley rails, I'll show you the mounting system for those of you that are not familiar. It uses the same barrel nut. So if you already have a Geisley rail, um, you can just kind of use your same barrel nut. Of course, it does come with the barrel nut. The nice thing about these over a lot of the other offerings on the market right now is that you do not have to time this. It doesn't. It's not like the standard AR barrel nut where you have to time to get the gas tube through. Really lightweight, really really lightweight, um, but rigid. 
you know, it has a decent amount of length on here and you've got your holes to, to use your spanner wrench. Let me just give you a view of how it attaches. Here's a CMT upper. This is also a brand new offering. I've lightly greased it with some lithium grease. Which is, I recommend that you do if you're putting on a, any barrel nut. Maybe some never sees. Just screws right on there like that. I'm just going to hand tighten and show you. So you don't have to time it at all. Of course, you could see here your gas tube can pass right into your upper receiver with no problem at all. So you tighten this down. I think maybe about 40 pounds of torque would be fine. And then, of course, it slides right on to the Geisley rail. And all the Geisley rails are the same in this, in this fashion. They all attach the same way. Once it's slid on, you merely have to align your top Picatinny rail. Just kind of align it there by hand. And then you've got a set screw on the left and on the right side here. You tighten those down and that will help ensure your alignment from uh, your upper receiver to your rail. And then just tighten down these, these cross bolts here. Put in your two cross bolts and you tighten them down. I'm not going to do it. And that's it. It's extremely rigid. It's more rigid than you would think for uh, the way it attaches. Um, some of the other companies, Centurion Arms, uh, Daniel Defense and their modular rail, a lot of the companies are, are wising up and going with a similar mounting system to this because you don't have to deal with the standard AR barrel nut with timing for the gas tube. Um, just really easy. You could take the, just popping these two screws and loosening up these set screws, you could pull the whole rail right back off the gun and do any kind of maintenance on the gas system or whatever you would need to do without having to do much else. Really excited about this. Wanted to get this one on camera before this whole uh, upper and lower assembly is going to go and get coated. Possibly a gray color, maybe a Cryptek uh, Highlander pattern. But I wanted to get it on camera before I get it all coated to kind of give you guys a first look. Um, just one last thing, of course I did mention it's 15 inches with all of the rail sections attached, all three that it comes with, plus the barrel nut. I weighed myself kind of unscientifically on my bathroom scale just by subtracting my own weight. It comes in at just about 19 ounces, maybe just over 19 ounces, which isn't bad considering that is the weight with the barrel nut and the rail sections. And that's something always to keep in mind when you're looking at weights online on different components, rail, sec rail uh, four ends in particular, is that sometimes the weight doesn't include the barrel nut or any rail sections you might attach. Attached. So in its final configuration, let's say, the way I'm going to use it, it's just over 19 ounces, which is pretty damn light for a 15-inch rail. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions, um, please post below. Uh, and after I get, a, get this thing coated and kind of get this gun put together, I'll give you another look. Thanks again. Talk to you later.